Well, you don't mind that I sit here, do you? No. I haven't seen the conductor. It's just that I, I don't have any money and I don't want to walk the hallway to the hallway to, to the port. I know it's a bit cheeky, but do you have any brandy? It's just that it's been a while since I've had a nip. Yeah, they don't serve it in the jail. <laughs> they tell me I'm a rogue and a vagabond just for speaking my mind. You know what? Someone needs to speak for the small people. Oh, I've never stolen anything, no. And I've never hurt anyone. Well, other than the wardens and, and the constables, but sometimes they deserve it. <laughs> oh, that Constable Burns. You've probably heard of him. Oh, he keeps an eye on me. And I don't want to borrow him. But apparently, he wants me to be his wife. <laughs> like that is ever going to happen. Indecent language is what they got me for. Yes. The way a girl talks, apparently that's a crime now. And the time before that, it was public drunkenness. And all I'd done was just gone into a pub and had a, a, a wee nip. And then I wandered out in the street and they arrested me just for being out in the street. I wasn't drunk. I was just sick. I was very, very sick. And I said, please, just take me to the madhouse. But they took me to the jail instead. Hm. What's this disturbing the peace? Can't anyone have any fun anymore? First of all, they tried to find me. Where do they think I am ever going to get the money to pay the fines? And because I have none, well, they take me to the jail. Once a day, I get to come out and see the sky. Once a day, I'm reminded of the freedom that I've had to give up to protect the community, yes, from me. <sighs> Chat between those, those four walls. If only they understood what it does to a person's soul to have the sky taken away, not be able to see the sun, not being able to touch and, and see other people. Have you heard what Mrs. Kirby and her reverend husband are doing? Oh yes, they're out to shut all the pubs. Who are they to tell me how to run my life? I'm not telling them how to run their life. And they're calling it the Temperance Society. I mean, what a ridiculous name. The Temperance Society, I could have picked a better name than that. I don't suppose you have any work you need doing? Look, I'm, I'm very good at ironing and washing. And I'm a hard worker, I'm happy to do anything. Oh, I can cook as well. You live at the port. It's going to be good to be back. I feel like half my life is being spent behind bars. Mind you, at least I get fed. And sometimes it's not even too bad. And I get some shelter over my head as well. So at least it provides for something. You know, once, there was this time that they only fed me bread and water for seven weeks. But it might have been because I'd kicked the sergeant in the shins. Now that he didn't deserve it. You don't know of any rooms going. I, I don't mind what it is. I look, it could even be a shed. It's only me. I don't take up much room. And I tell you what, I'll pay my way. I don't want people thinking that they can just keep parming out charity to me. Because, you know, that's what the government should be doing. The government should be providing more charity for people like me. You going to the football on Saturday? Apparently our boys are playing those tops Nord. Oh, it's going to be so good to be out there watching the game, seeing the boys. Maybe I'll see you there. Oh, oh. 
Looks like we're about to go. Thanks for having a chat. Sarah Francisco was born in Ireland and lived through the potato famine as a young girl. Her sister had emigrated to Port Adelaide and the two of them wrote to one another and Sarah eventually joined her sister in Port Adelaide in 1866 when she was 26 years of age. A year after she arrived, she married a man named John Francisco or Handsome Frank. Their marriage was an unhappy one and after the birth of their second son, Frank uh, left for a fortnight, but never returned. After Frank left, Sarah worked um, as, a, as a laundress, she worked in hotels, she, she really did any sorts of work that she could find to support her two sons and kept them clothed and fed. Um, and it was while she was working in a hotel, she was busy at work, um, that her eldest son came into the hotel um, very upset and his younger brother had fallen down one of the steep embankments at Port Adelaide. Her son died uh, the following day and Sarah, distraught, uh, turned to drink. Um, for about the next 40 years, Sarah was in and out of the Adelaide jail, mostly for misdemeanours, public drunkenness, um, using abusive language and things like that. Uh, she became very accustomed to, to living in the jail and she even had a cell that she referred to as her own cell and got very upset when the jailers tried to put her in a different cell. Sarah was well known in the port and in Adelaide and she travelled between the two places on trains like this. The train, train line was opened in 1856 and there were first class, second class and third class tickets available. So quite different to the public trains um, that people travel on in Adelaide today. And you could also take your dog on the train for one shilling. Monday the 15th of April 1912, Sarah appeared before a magistrate for the 295th time. But the outcome, outcome this time was going to be different. With the, with the support of the Salvation Army, Sarah began to turn her life around. And she never went to jail again. Although some of her acquaintances continued to acknowledge that from time to time, she had a little bit too much to drink. That Christmas was the first time that she had spent Christmas out of jail in 12 years. One of the key social reformers in South Australia was Reverend Joseph Kirby, who was a very energetic man who worked across the country in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia and South Australia. Reverend Kirby had a congregation in Port Adelaide that he worked with very closely for many years. And one of the key reforms that he was involved with was the reduction in the sale of alcohol. He was part of the temperance movement and the temperance movement recognised that there were social problems that were caused by excessive alcohol consumption. 